The K-2 can penetrate seven Chinese Type 9-9A tanks lined up side by side with a single shot at a distance of 5,000 meters. When this astonishing claim spread from South Korean military forums to the international public sphere, armored vehicle experts worldwide fell into collective silence. A well-known South Korean military website ranked its own K-2 Black Panther tank as second in the world and first in Asia, even placing it ahead of the U.S. Army's M-102 Abrams. However, when the Polish Army's technical team received the first batch of K-2PL tanks, their first action was to use a vernier caliper to measure the turret armor, revealing an embarrassing truth. The South Korean claim of 1,000 mm of equivalent protection had shrunk to less than 600 mm in reality. The theory of one shot, seven kills, touted by South Korean military enthusiasts, was first ruthlessly debunked by physics. While the K-2 S. German Rheintal 120mm L55 smoothbore gun is among the world's best, its effective range has inherent limitations. After traveling over 2,000 meters, the shell's accuracy drops sharply, and variables like cross winds and humidity make hitting targets beyond 3,000 meters nearly a gamble. The limitations of modern tank fire control systems at long ranges make precise hits at 5,000 meters a pipe dream. The armor-piercing mechanism itself shatters this myth. Fin-stabilized discarding Sabot armor-piercing rounds rely on high-strength heavy metal projectiles to penetrate armor. When this steel needle strikes the first layer of armor at 1,700 meters per second, its structure inevitably fractures and deforms. After penetrating a single layer of armor, the remaining kinetic energy of the core is insufficient to maintain its structural integrity. Even when facing the relatively weaker side armor of the Type 99 tank, the armor-piercing round would disintegrate into fragments after penetrating a single side, making it impossible to consecutively penetrate seven tanks. Even in one-on-one -on -one combat, the K-2 cannot claim a clear advantage. After installing FY4 reactive armor on the front of the 9-9 turret, its protection reaches the equivalent of 1,000 mm of homogeneous steel or more. The German-made DM-5-3 armor-piercing round used by the K-2 has a penetration depth of 780 mm at 2,000 m, while the domestically developed K279 armor piercing round only achieves 600 mm, meaning that, when facing the 9-9 as front armor, the K2 must close to a dangerous distance to pose a threat. This disparity in firepower stems from a generational gap in core technology. Germany strictly limits access to advanced armor piercing round technology and South Korea has yet to overcome the technical barriers of high-density tungsten alloy formulations and precision centering processes. In early 2024, when the first batch of K-2PL tanks arrived in Poland, ultrasonic thickness gauges used by acceptance engineers revealed another truth. The physical thickness of the turret's front armor was only 700 mm, equivalent to approximately 600 mm of homogeneous steel far below the advertised 1,000 mm equivalent. Live fire tests conducted by the Polish Defense Research Institute were even more compelling. Russian-made 3 bm 42 armor-piercing rounds successfully penetrated the connection point between the K-2PL's turret and hull at a distance of 2,200 meters. This result forced the Polish military to urgently request additional reactive armor, but the extra weight affected the tank's mobility. The myth of off-road performance also shattered against concrete barriers. In early tests, a K-2 prototype was stuck by a 1.3-meter-high concrete obstacle. The accident investigation pointed to a fatal flaw in the South Korean-developed transmission. The torque converter's efficiency and torque transmission plummeted under low-speed conditions. This design flaw ultimately forced South Korea to switch to German rank transmissions as a stopgap measure. Ironically, the tank dubbed the K-2 as Savior by South Korean netizens is the Russian T-80U tank. This batch of Russian-made equipment, acquired in the 1990s as debt repayment, remains the backbone of the South Korean Army's armored forces thanks to its reliable gas turbine engine, highlighting the K-2's maturity challenges. So why did the K-2, whose performance is in question, secure a 1,000-unit order from Poland? The answer lies deeply rooted in the geopolitical reality of Eastern Europe. After the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Poland donated all 250 of its tanks to Ukraine, having its own armored forces. Facing the Russian Guards Tank Division in the Kaliningrad direction, Poland needed tanks immediately. When the US M102 was quoted at $20 million per unit with deliveries scheduled for 2030 and Germany's Leopard 2 production lines were overwhelmed, South Korea offered an irresistible deal. The first 180 tanks would be delivered within two years, along with a production license for 1,000 units in terms for local assembly. In the second contract signed in 2025, 
63 units, will be assembled at Poland's Milik factory with enhanced chassis protection. South Korea understands the golden rule of the arms market, under the premise of meeting performance standards, delivery speed and technology transfer are the key. The K2S modular design is compatible with NATO standards, costs 20% less, and more importantly, has a production capacity that is always ready. While Germany struggled with supply chain disruptions, South Korea achieved the industrial miracle of delivering 300,000 artillery shells to Ukraine in 41 days. This efficient production capacity is underpinned by a unique, final assembly model. Hyundai Rotom handles integration, POSCO provides armor steel, and Samsung Tequan supplies fire control computers, forming a highly synergistic defense industry complex. Peeling back the indigenization aura of the K2 reveals a global defense procurement directory, German main guns, French fire control systems, and Israeli missile interfaces. South Korea's innovative liquid gas suspension and millimeter wave radar exposed defect during Arctic testing at minus 25 degrees C. Hydraulic oil viscosity increased sharply, causing suspension failure, and the millimeter wave radar had a success rate of less than 60% under electromagnetic interference. These issues erupted during Norwegian version testing forcing South Korea to allocate an additional $30 million for antifreeze modifications. Military sales are fundamentally a game of political economy. South Korea has deeply tied the narrative of the K-2 as the Asia's top tank to its national technological image. When Norway purchased 72 units at a unit price of $15 million and Oman purchased 76 units at $10 million, these transactions reinforced South Korea's military industries, high-end, persona, the K-2's precise positioning, makes it a sophisticated opportunist, offering NATO compatibility and rapid delivery to Eastern European countries, providing Middle Eastern nations with a luxury experience through desert filters. This marketing strategy propelled South Korea's military trade volume to $20 billion in 2022, ranking it fourth globally. However, all weapon myths ultimately require battlefield validation. When Poland's 18th mechanized division deployed the K-2 to the SUWKI corridor, just 3.5 kilometers from the Russian border, these Black Panthers will face their ultimate test. Just as the T-14 Armada saw its myth shattered in Ukraine, the true value of the K-2 lies not in laboratory data, but in its actual survival rate when facing suicide drones and anti-tank mines. The first batch of deployed K-2 PL tanks have been retrofitted with Polish Arawa 3 reactive armor and the Eagle Eye active defense system, these battlefield modifications precisely highlight the shortcomings of the original design. Polish engineers' calipers measure not only the gap in armor thickness, but also the chasm between national pride and battlefield reality. As the K-2 heads toward the Russian border, Polish armored troops do not gaze with reverence at the Asian champion. Their eyes scrutinize whether the steel can withstand the next missile. The K-2, a success in the arms market, filled the NATO armor gap with speed, but on the horizon toward Kaliningrad, the laws of physics await all hollow marketing claims. When artillery fire illuminates the steel contours, the battlefield will deliver the most impartial judgment, and on that scorecard, there will never be a place for the fairy tale of one shot penetrating seven vehicles.